Okay. Oh, I think we're recording. Okay. Hi. Hi, you guys. It's me. <laughs> Miss Corrigan. Um, and this is my first video for third grade. I'm showing you guys how to make a Minnesota spirit mammal based on the art of Roy Thomas. Now, I am really lucky because this is an actual Roy Thomas painting that I bought, or actually my mom got for me for my birthday many years ago. And Roy Thomas was a, an Anishinaabe artist who grew up in Canada and worked in northern Minnesota as well. And this is one of his paintings. So here is a loon and a fish. I'm not going to guess what kind of fish. Maybe it's a northern and an otter. And what he would do is he would do a simplified version of the creature and do the interior lines of them. So the skeleton inside. So... I really love this piece and I'm really glad I was able to show it to you. I'm so excited about it. I need to clean the glass off. So I am going to be sending you a PDF that will have a number of Minnesota mammals on it for you to pick from. And you can pick one and then use that to do your drawing. And here is what you're going to need. Um, I have my paper right here. I have my squirrel. That's my Minnesota mammal, keeping it kind of simple. And then I wanted to show you this handout here. So what you're going to do is use the idea of shapes to create your animal. So following this cute little handout, one of the first things I want you to do is follow these little steps here. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, and just do a practice animal. So what you can do is create an oval and I'm just using a regular old, look at that. It says number two right on there, HB. I'm doing an oval, which is step one, and then step two is putting in these funny backwards three and forwards three, and what that represents is the shoulders and the hips of the animal, and then you add your legs, and the back legs bend backwards on most animals, and the front legs have a little bit of a back bend, and then they go forward. And then number four is you're adding in your rib cage. Number five is adding in your head, and your feet. <laughs> I can hear our pug snoring in the front room. This is a very basic version of just about any animal. And then here, we're looking at how different animals' parts get put together. So here's a horse, which has the oval body, and then here's the backward three and the backward three, and the legs going on and the legs going on, and then the neck goes a little bit different, so it's got an extra piece on there. So if this was a horse, I would have done it a bit longer out and then extended the nose out and put ears on. And if it was a horse, I would have extended the body back a little bit and given him longer legs and given him a narrow chest. So basic, 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 basic. What you're going to do, I wanted you to do a practice one first. So this is practice. Ah, step one. Step two, you're going to take that idea and apply it to your photo. So here is my squirrel. So my squirrel's body is here. So I'm going to put that piece in here. My squirrel's head is up here. That is, oh, let me get it back on screen. And then the, this part and this part are here, except the squirrel has like a big back foot with his little toesies on it and a wonderfully fluffy tail, which I almost don't have room for. And then his front feet are up here holding a little nut in his little face. And then I'm going to put his eye in and his little nosy and his little earsies. So this is my outline of my creature. My little squirrely. Then that was Bunny the pug. Maybe we'll do a draw, dog thing later. So now to make my squirrel have the x-ray parts that we have, oops, that we see in Roy Thomas's work, I'm going to give him, let's see, I want to give him kind of a windpipe coming down, and then I want to make a lung here. Ooh, I want to put a heart in, so let's put a big heart in there, and then we want bones coming out to the arms. Maybe I want a brain up here. Maybe what's in his brain is an acorn. What else? Let's see. We need big, strong muscles in this back leg. So let's put muscles in here. 
cool. And then my tail. Oh, I want like a backbone along here too. So backbone. There. So there's my creature for the most part. Then the next thing, you know what? I'm going to pause there and stop for a second. So this is the drawing it out part. And next you're going to need Okay, so uh, <laughs> um, it turns out that the art teacher doesn't have as many art supplies as she thinks she does. So I don't actually have a watercolor set, guys. Um, what I do have, I'm going to show you because I think you're probably going to be in about the same boat and you're going to have to be a little creative. I do have a box of Crayola crayons, which will be just wonderful. I also have this tin of ragged mixed up oil pastels which would also be perfect and I have an actual thing of oil pastels that I took from my classroom thinking of materials and then I have water soluble oil pastels these are not what I actually want to use right now but they would work and Crayola markers would actually be cool too or if you have sharpie markers any kind of markers would be just fine for this um what the, and I don't have watercolors. Here's what I have for a watercolor set. It's a tiny little cute watercolor set. And it goes like that. And you use your teeny tiny brush. And you wet down your teeny tiny paints with your teeny tiny brush. And then you can paint with that, I think. We're going to have to see. Because I'm not sure how, how well this is going to go here. But we'll give it a shot. Okay, so I've got that kind of prep. You guys remember that about watercolors, right? If you are lucky enough to have watercolors, here's my giant watercolor brush. What you want to do is wet them down first to kind of prep them. So I'm going to wet these down a lot. And hopefully I'll be able to use them. Then I'm going to use my crayons actually, because I'm thinking maybe you guys have crayons. I don't think, I don't think most of your parents are going to want you to have oil pastels. Do you know why? Because they're so messy is what my thinking is. Okay. So what we want to do, I am going to go over all of my <laughs> organ lines. So here is an organ that's coming from my, it's my stomach, I think. And then let's make a lung there. Oh, here's my heart. So what we're doing right now is it's all going to be about lines. So in my creature, oh, I know I had this whole thing about warm and cool that I was going to talk to you guys about, but I think what we're going to do is just whatever it takes. So my interior of this little rodent is going to have different reds. And actually, that's a purple, isn't it? Hmm. What do you think about that? So there's that part. And then we'll put another leggy over there. So I'm putting my bones in. And here's some more bones. And I'm pushing pretty hard to make sure that <clears throat> when I do put my watercolor on, if I happen to be lucky enough to have anything like watercolor, that it will actually resist. Oh, that's where it comes in. Yes. <laughs> oh, I am a professional. But you should try this at home. So I'm outlining around the outside of my squirrel now. I'm gonna put oh I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow up here in the brain because that's like a light bulb. I'm gonna actually give him a blue eye. There. Oh, he should have an acorn. Let's put an acorn there for him to eat. A blue acorn. Oh, and then I wanna also go in and fill in these other spaces around here. Gosh, and you know what, you guys? You could totally post yours to Artsonia, couldn't you? Although, I would be quite delighted if you would just take a photo of it and share it with me. I'm still trying to figure all of this stuff out. Me and, uh, me and Mrs. Grams have been chatting. So there, that's looking pretty cool. Oh, I want a little bit more by that face, though, don't I? Let's see, what else have I got in here? I'm going to take another orange. And go like this because that eye is really important. Put a little bit more in there. Oh, and I didn't do my acorn. I'm going to color the acorn green. Okay. So there, and I want to put a little bit more in my heart because that's also very important. All right. 
And then we put our materials away. So I'm going to pick up my crayons and put them back in my box. There. Put them out of the way. Now I'm going to paint. So let's see how this paint works. Do you remember the idea of a wash? Because a wash, I'm going to show you. This is a green area, right? So I've got a wet brush and I'm just wetting down that side and this side where it's green. And then the opposite of green is red. So let me take my tiny little amount of red and let's put that in there. Oh goodness, this is very tiny. I think you could also actually paint with food coloring if you have food coloring. Have you guys ever tried that? I'll have to do a food coloring lesson because that could be fun. So there, that's not quite as bright as I'm wanting it. I'm not in love with this brush either. I wonder if I have a better brush I can use. I'm going to use this one, but this is not a watercolor brush. But let's see what it does. Can I get it on there more? I can get it on there more. It's a little, a little brighter. Whatever it takes, right? Let's just get her done. It's just nice to paint. I really enjoy painting. If I ever mentioned that to you guys, I think I might have mentioned it once or twice. Do you remember the opposites? So, like, if I want to color this area in here, that's pretty purple. So the opposite of purple is going to be yellow. So let's put some yellow on there. Ooh, I like that. Kind of looks like super squirrel. And this is a little purple in here, too. So I'm going to put yellow in there yellow in here and yellow in here now i gotta tell you guys too that this is a project <laughs> that we would have taken probably three classes to do so if you feel like taking a long time on this please do don't feel like you have to rush i tend to be a little bit of a speedy gonzalez when i'm doing things um, also because I'm talking and oops, that needs a lot more water. That's not watercolor. I'm talking while I'm painting, which is kind of a tricky thing. Um, I want to put more of that blue somewhere. Where else do I want to put it? Maybe I'll just put some in here. Oh, and I have Plato home with me here, so he's fine. So you guys don't have to worry about him. We'll do some kind of a. That would be fun to do a Plato lesson. Oh, so I need purple up there in the brain. Oh, and I need some green in the heart because that's the opposite there. I like that. Oh, kind of liking it. What did I say? I said purple. I don't have a purple. How do you make a purple, people? Let's see if I can mix one. A little bit of yellow or a little bit, <laughs> a little bit of red and a little bit of blue. Well, what do you know? How's that? That's kind of purple. We'll put a little bit of orange on that ball, and then I'm going to actually put some... I want to color a little bit in the background, too. So I'll do that with green, because I don't, haven't done much green anywhere. There, and that's our lesson for the day. Kind of, kind of, I'm liking it. So if you're able to take a photo of yours and send it to me, email it to me, that would be just happy dappy. I hope you guys are having a fun time, as fun time as you can have, and I will talk to you later. Love you guys. Bye.